Bitcoin has hit record levels and in this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast, we're looking at if Bitcoin is still a good deal and should investors be paying more attention to it. Welcome to the Wealth Nation podcast, a podcast for every mother, daughter, grandmother, sister and wife and the men who are smart enough to tune in. The Wealth Nation podcast brings you all you need to know about investments, business, property investments, personal finance, and all around financial wellness. Here is your host, Yolanda Rose. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Wealth Nation podcast. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. I'm Yolanda, Wealth Advisor, and it is my goal on the Wealth Nation podcast to give you easy, actionable tips content and strategies that you can use to manage your money well and to build generational wealth. The Wealth Nation podcast is sponsored by Audible. Audible is a seller and producer of spoken audio entertainment, information and educational programming on the internet. Audible sells digital audiobooks, radio and TV programs and audio versions of magazines and newspapers. For a 30-day free trial of Audible, go to www.audible.com financiallyfabulousfemales.com forward slash audible. The new year has been a tough 2020. I I honestly think think that things are going to be a little tougher this year, but that's why you're here. You're here to know uh, how you could have an advantage, how you can prepare yourselves for, for what's coming in this coming year. And today we're talking about Bitcoin. So if you've been watching what's going on and if you think that Bitcoin is a thing that uh, you need to be invested in and you have no idea how to get invested in Bitcoin, you can go to our, our YouTube channel. It's Financially Fabulous Females and check out the video on how you can buy Bitcoin in South Africa. But for those of you that are still on their fence, that have no idea what Bitcoin is all about, uh, we did speak about it. And you can check the show notes for the link of our previous episode where we spoke a little bit about Bitcoin 101. We're going to dive deeper today, try and refresh what we learned about Bitcoin previously. And we're going to dig deep. What's the what's new when it comes to Bitcoin in 2021? So if you don't know what's Bitcoin, let's try and understand that. Firstly, what is Bitcoin? Well, it's basically a digital and global uh, money currency. It allows people to send and receive money across the internet, even to someone that they don't know they don't like or don't even trust. So money can be exchanged without it being linked to a real identity. And uh, uh, from from that, I'm sure you can tell what's what the pros of cons of, of just that one aspect is. So that's what it basically is. That that's Bitcoin. It's it's virtual money. It's nothing that you can touch. Uh, I mean, it's on your phone or it's on your computer. It's in a digital wallet, but it's not like a piece of gold that you can put in your pocket. Gold coin. It's not. It's not like um, currency cash that you can hold in your hand, you can deposit in a bank. In fact, there are Bitcoin ATMs where you can literally uh, withdraw your your Bitcoins into hard currency or fiat currency. But um, everything about Bitcoin is digital. So how do Bitcoins get value? I mean, there's nothing backing Bitcoin, right? Um, it's not like currency where it's backed by a certain government or or if it's backed by gold. What really determines the price of Bitcoin? Well, the price of Bitcoin is basically based on supply and demand. And we see now, I mean, depending on when you're listening to this, Bitcoin hit over, well, touching $33,000 for one coin. Now, it peaked around 2018, January 2018, when it hit 20,000. A lot of people were saying it's a bubble and it it floated around for a while uh, between the 6,000 and the 9,000 mark for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden it shot up in December. And all of that is based on supply and demand. When people uh, want it, the price goes up. Since uh, since Bitcoin first came out in about... 12 years or so, there's a limited number of Bitcoins that can be mined. It's around 21 million or so, about 18 and a half million have been mined already. So that level of scarcity is coming into play and we find that the price of Bitcoin is going up. Although there's no there's no actual asset that is backing Bitcoin at this point, it's merely the technology. And the technology only allows for a certain number of coins to be, to be mined via mathematical procedures, via a computer, it's limited to how much can be mined in a certain time. So by twenty, the early 2030s or so, 
Bitcoin would have reached its peak. There's no more mining of Bitcoin and there'll only be around 21 million in circulation. So the premise is that there are, there are big wells that hold a large amount of this Bitcoin when it first started because when Bitcoin first started, it was a couple of dollars. And as demand increased, and we're now sitting at around $33,000 for one Bitcoin. So there's a couple of these big guys around and they apparently hold the most of it. And that's where the scarcity comes in, driving prices up. And it also comes to competition as well. Now there are dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of other sort of digital coins and the most popular coins being uh, Ripple, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin and even Ether. So there's a big spread of coins and these compete with Bitcoin in the exchange as well. So that is something that also drives demand, just like how you have currencies, dollar, pound, euro. They're all competing with each other in terms of trade. It's a similar sort of fashion with Bitcoin. We also have to look at the cost of production as well. Bitcoins are virtual, um, just like how you go out and mine gold. Bitcoins need to be mined and this mine, this mining is not really physical mining where somebody's working machines are working. It's just computers. And it's computers that are very high-end computers in this mass co computer farms, server farms, and they're basically solving problems and they get paid in Bitcoin. So the cost of production is very high and you find places like in the colder areas, Eastern Europe, Iceland, you'll have these huge big Bitcoin farms and all they do is mine. And the cost of mining increases because of all the computers, cooling equipment is needed. And that is why you'll find in a, in a lot of cooler environments where there's not a lot of humidity, you'll find these big farms because it costs less to cool in that kind of environment. So the, uh, the price, the cost of production is something that uh, contributes to the value of a Bitcoin as well. Raising financially savvy children involves teaching them a variety of skills, from budgeting to planning to earning and saving. Besides giving them an understanding of the value of a rand, it prepares them for real-world finances. Financial literacy is a vital skill, and it is never too early to teach your kids about money. Many parents wonder how they can teach their kids about money, and where to find age-appropriate resources. You can now purchase the Financial Literacy for Kids workbook, which is aimed at primary school kids. It's now available at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. This workbook provides you with 12 lessons, activities, lesson plans, discussion points, and quizzes that you can use to test your kids' knowledge. Shop now at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Tuned In. Now back to the show. We also look at uh, regulation and legal matters. Governments are, are becoming more open to the use of cryptocurrencies. That has caused uh, regulators to debate the bankers to get involved because obviously the bankers don't want this product because uh, it's, competing, it's competing directly with the banks because if you guys tried sending money outside the country or receiving money inside the country, it's a pain to do. It could take you up to five to seven days and it costs a lot. Uh, the Reserve in South Africa, the Reserve Bank gets involved. The, the Reserve Bank wants to know there's money coming in to you in your account. It's in dollars, it's in pound. What is it for? Who is it from? Th that's the kind of regulation that comes with regular currency. Now, this is not the case with Bitcoin. In a matter of seconds, you can easily have a million dollars in your account. No questions asked and nobody is regulating this. As governments, as businesses, as the big regulators become more open to Bitcoin, uh, it works in its favor and the, it just drives the value up. So how do you invest in Bitcoin? Well, there's, there's a number of ways that you can. There's actually indexes tracking Bitcoins now, which is, which is crazy. Uh, but the most common way to invest in Bitcoin is actually going to an exchange and basically purchasing purchasing these bitcoins with your hard currency. So you would go to an exchange, for example, go and check out my video on our YouTube channel, and it's with Luno, the South African exchange. And how it works in South Africa is you got to register with Luno. Luno is a registered financial services company in South Africa, so it has to follow all of the various financial regulations. So when a transaction does take place, Luno is required to do FICA, and oh, in other exchanges, you'll, you'll hear the term KYC. 
know your customer. So you got to produce identification. Um, in South Africa's case, it's actually linked to SARS. So it, it is it, that transparency when it comes to owning Bitcoin is not there from the South African sense. Unless you go the back doorways, there's plenty of back doorways that you can do it. But if you're buying legitimately on a South African exchange like Luno, you got to go through this process. Uh, they'll give you a South African bank account. You can use your credit card, deposit some funds in there. And then the Bitcoin is placed into your Luno wallet, and then you can transfer it out into your Bitcoin wallet. I'll show you all of this in our video, so go and check it out. There's also a free gift for you as well. So go and check out that video, how to buy Bitcoin in South Africa. Uh, there's a link to that video in the show notes as well if you want to check it out. So that's that's it. You basically buy the Bitcoin and you hold it and you wait for the prices to go up. Now, will I be bu buying Bitcoin at $33,000 for a coin? Never going to happen. Um, the way I see it, it's sort of like a cycle, just like any asset that you buy, from gold to shares, ETFs, ETNs, whatever it is you're buying, there's a cycle to it and... You want to buy low and you want to sell high, and that difference is your profit. And we're always talking about buying low on this show. So will I be buying Bitcoin at $33,000? Never going to happen. Most likely I'm going to wait for a while and maybe buy a few and keep it or even look at the alternate coins like Litecoin and, and the ETH coin as well where the technology is a little bit different. And that's what I would be investing in and hope – when it comes to 10, 20 years, that I can sell these coins at a significant prop profit. As you can see, Bitcoin is very volatile. Two years ago, it was at around, what, $4,000? And now we're sitting at 33000 Imagine if you, if you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin back then. I mean, you'd be sitting pretty right now. So why should you invest in Bitcoin? Well, it's scarce. Like we discussed, only, 20, only 21 million coins to be mined um, 18 and a half million already uh, have been sold. In South Africa, it's also very secure to purchase with the whole FICA thing. And it's becoming a more acceptable form of payment. We'll find a South African payment gateway like uh, PayFast or even Take A Lot. They accept Bitcoins now. And whatever business is using a platform like, like PayFast, uh, PayFast accepts Bitcoins and they will pay the seller in, in your hard currency. So it is becoming more acceptable form of payment with bitcoins one of the cons well a lot of cons that i don't like about bitcoin is that there's nothing backing it if everybody loses interest in bitcoin today i mean what are we going to do you know um if there's a collective effort to to stay off bitcoin if the government bans bitcoin what are we going to do if we put heavy investments into cryptocurrency. If you look at a South African rand or, or an American dollar, you'll see that the currency is backed by legitimate sovereign governments. Even way back in the day when currency was backed by gold, uh, there was backing there. If you have a Kruger rand, you can trade the Kruger rand. It's backed by the South African government. The Britannia, it's backed by the British government. Nothing is backing Bitcoin, and it's a little bit scary because it's so unregulated. It does take a lot of power away from the banks. But look at a case of terrorism, how easy it is for terrorists to move money around the world with the cryptocurrency system. I guess there's both pros and cons to, to regulation, you know. Also, we have to look at the tax implications as well. SARS wants his share. And in South Africa, uh, capital gains is to be paid on significant or any profits made in cryptocurrency. And also we got to look at safety and security. I actually have a client now who was very keen on investing in Bitcoin a while ago. And I helped her to get some Bitcoin in her hand. And I always keep her updated about Bitcoin because, I mean, it's my field. I got to know, right? So I'm like, all right, Mrs. So-and-so, we got to sell the Bitcoin now. You're going to make a, a good lot of money. And the client cannot find her wallet details to access her wallet to sell these coins. So there's the risk because apparently the wallet is very secure. Nobody knows who you are. You're just a code and money comes in and goes out that way. But what happens in this case? I mean, if you get locked out of your bank account, you just hit the reset button or go into a bank at the most. But when it comes to crypto, it's lost. It's gone forever once you lose access to your wallet that possibly could be hacked or even if you lose your details what do you do all right so will i be investing in bitcoins at this point no 
whatever I invest in, I will always wait for it to hit rock bottom, bottom before I make any investments. But um, this round, it's a pass from me. All right, so that's it for me on this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. Be sure to check out our uh, Luno video on how you can buy Bitcoins when the price uh, does go down. There's a, gre- uh, there's a free gift in there for you as well. And also look out for our new video that ha- comes out every Thursday on our YouTube channel. All right, so that's it for me on this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I'll chat to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to visit our website at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com and sign up for our free investment masterclass.